I'm John Haas. With a background in sustainability and a passion for fishing, I travel the world to showcase the good, bad, and ugly around sustainable fisheries. Haas Off The Grid uses the excitement, adventure, and direct connection to nature inherent to the sport of fishing to show the need for stewardship. I go off the grid to show some of the world's greatest fish and fisheries, creating awareness about the threats to their status and promoting a conservation ethic. We have too much power over what lives and dies on this planet to not care and take ownership. Together, we can make a difference. On this episode, we're leaving the Northwest and heading down to the Pacific side of Guatemala to fish on the Allure at a Sailfish Oasis Resort. We're on a mission to find sailfish and catch one on a fly. With a vibrant diversity both on land and in the water, Guatemala hosts arguably one of the most amazing and robust sailfish fisheries in the world. All the top warm water pelagic Pacific game fish make a showing here during the season. Guatemala is unique because it's mandatory to release all billfish caught in its waters. Double digit hookups per day are not uncommon here because of it. We'll be checking out one of the most interesting and fun places to go when in Guatemala, the Spanish colonial city of Antigua. And of course, we'll be taking an eco moment for the planet and speaking with Ricardo Picorni of La Azotea Coffee Plantation, one of the leading sustainable coffee plantations in the world. Stick around, you don't want to miss it. Hey, let's do a quick gear check. We're out here in Guatemala. We're fishing for sailfish, marlin, tuna. We've got a variety of setups. So we're fishing both conventional gear and fly gear. Our goal is to try and at least get some shots at uh, billfish on fly. So let me go through some of the fly gear. We're fishing IGFA compliant rigs. These are Cam Siegler flies, rigged with gamagatsu hooks. We go to a shock leader, uh, typically uh, this is 80 pound to a huff nagel, to our tippet. And the tippet is 20 pounds. We take that to a bimini twist up to our butt section, and the butt section of this is a 100 pound uh, butt section, um, no more than 12 feet long. We're taking that to our fly line. This is a setup for sailfish. We have a bigger setup for marlin, another G. Loomis cross current rod. I love these rods, they are excellent rods. One of the nice features of them is they have these collapsible guides so you don't break them off. Nothing worse than that, worse than a broken guide when you go on a trip like this. So, as Elvis used to say, well, let's talk a little more action. Let's get back on it. Waiting for a fish, we raised one up on a teaser. Pitched the bait back to him. We're waiting to see if he comes up and eats. All right, got a sailfish on. Sailfish right out there. All right, catch up to him. Right in the middle of all these spinners is a sail. Gotta love that. All right, we're on him. There he is, he's taking off. Right straight out in that line. All right. Fish on. We're trolling around for some tuna around these spinners, and sure enough, we got a sail. Just shows you when there's life, you never know what you're gonna find. All right. There he is, beauty. Is that him? Is that my line all the way up? No, that's another fish. So I think you ran around a friggin' spinner, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's your fish there, but you're wrapped up on the spinner's open. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. God damn. Well, oh, well doing a, doing a freaking, uh, yeah, yeah. He's coming in, I mean. Ah, oh, we got wrapped up around a spinner back there. Now we gotta go back down and unha unhook it. I don't know where the sail fish is now. It was a sailfish at first, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I can't break. Hey, no. Look it off. It's off. We still got the sailfish on. Can you believe that? We still got the sailfish on, dude. I 
tired, huh? I can't believe the sailfish was still on after hooking that spinner dolphin, wrapping him up. All right. We're gonna go, we're gonna release this guy. It's a beautiful, beautiful fish. I wanna touch that fish. Let it go. Beauty. Beautiful sailfish. Beauty. Beautiful fish. Run some water through his gills, let him start kicking. When I can't hold him anymore, that means he's ready to go. Nice fish. All right. Clean release on that sail. Let's go get another one. Coming up, we'll take an eco moment at La Azotea Coffee Plantation. Check out the local scene in Antigua and change our tactics to try and catch a sailfish on a fly. Stick around, we're just getting started. We're on the Pacific side of Guatemala, fishing with Captain Kiwi, Chris Van Leeuwen, fishing on the Allure 2, out of Sailfish Oasis Resort. We're fishing for sailfish, and we just spotted our first signs of life. But first, so Chris goes over the technique we're gonna to the use. Side of the fish. Bottom of your turn, and you'll get that bite that you want. If it doesn't, we're gonna knock it back in gear, we're gonna re-tease the fish and just do the whole thing over again. So I never pop that. No, I don't pop it. The technique we're going to be using is called bait and switch. The crew will try and tease a fish to within casting range with either a plug or a piece of bait with no hooks attached to them. So the fish is close enough to cast a fly to it. It's all about timing and accuracy. The fly needs to land in the same path, either right in front of or next to the teaser. So when the teaser is pulled away, the fish eats the fly instead. You need to show them the right fly at the right time with the right action to get them to eat one. Hi, we're at Cerro de la Cruz, overlooking the beautiful town of Antigua. And I'm here with Mary Ann. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about Antigua. We have many museums, churches, local markets. You can hike in the volcanoes and mountains, visit coffee plantations, the restaurants and bars. So Mary Ann took us to where the locals eat for some native flavor. This is typical from Guatemala. This is lamb with potatoes, guacamole, and tamalitos. I have a pepian. It's one of the typical food from Antigua. Uh, it's chicken with potatoes, guacamole, and tamalitos. It's hilachas. It's beef with vegetables and tamalitos. Perfect. Let's eat. And then there's the nightlife. The party lasts all night in Antigua. Back to the fish. It's about time we raised one. As the crew clears the lines and teases the fish to the boat, I finally get my shot. that line in the water if we can when it's jumping like that. There it is. Come on, baby. Woo! We know you're hooked. We know you're hooked, baby. Good job, Captain. Good job, Cruz. He's that guy right in there. I didn't realize he was coming up that fast. He's just right up in the came in hole, short man. spread. Here he comes, coming up, coming up. Woo! All right, nice pick. Only got 20 pound tippets, so we gotta be a little gentle with her. Yeah. Stay down there. Stay down, baby. 
Whew. Once we get to the end of our year, we can actually call it a release. But we're going to actually bring this one all the way to the That's a catch right there. Good job, Catch John. right there. Beauty. This is all just for fun. You don't need to, you know, have anything permanent happen. Here. That is a catch. That's catch. All the fly. Guatemala style. Yep. Ready. Here we go. Fish though. One, two, three. Fish up, fish on. Yeah. Woo! Fish on. Okay, that's good, man. Get All that right, fish back in let's the water. Get that fish in there. It's nice and lit up. Not too much uh, stress on them. That's what you like to see. Those colors come up. Got it. Okay. Yeah, she's good. All right, baby. Get her color back. Beautiful fish. That's what we came to Guatemala for. Catch these babies on a fly is the most awesome thing. Guatemalan sailfish. Pass off the grid. Dig it. Thank you, fish. Woo! Awesome. Yeah. Good job, brother. Good job, good. guys. Phew. I was righteous. We're in Guatemala, fishing for Pacific sailfish out of Sailfish Oasis Resort with Captain Kiwi, Chris Van Leeuwen, on the Allure 2. We've landed two nice fish, and we're trying to make it three for three today on sails. But first, let's take a minute for the plan. This Eco Moment is brought to you by the CCA. Ricardo, thank you very much for taking the time. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to see you. Kiwa Coffee is still considered one of the top five coffees in the world. So the coffee plantation in itself is an attraction yeah. as itself on its own, you know. Yeah, when you think of Guatemala, I think sailfish and I think coffee. What the farm produces, the farm is organic. Uh, so we separate the farm from the main mill production. Because it's been an environment-oriented uh, farm, uh, we've begun deciding that to really impact the environment, we have to start with, little, with children. Uh, so we've opened the first green school in Central America, actually in all of Latin America, uh, with the concept of teaching kids from the pre-kinder age already to become environmentally conscious and to literally learn by using the environment as their learning tool. Right, so they're, they're a natural conservationist and taking care of the planet and, and steward, right, of nature. Exactly, becoming stewards of nature. So these are coffee plants. Uh, they look kind of uh, uh, sticks right now, but this is part of the coffee, coffee process. Uh, coffee requires, like wine, requires a, a pretty hefty shock period, which in Guatemala is a dry season. We only have two seasons here, dry and wet. That's it. You can look at the, at the tips. It's, these are going to be coffee beans very soon. One of the topics that we like to talk about is conservancy and uh, what's going on in the conservancy front in an area like Guatemala, which has, you know, lots of threats to the natural environment and uh, to the fisheries and all those things. Um, what, what's happening around here? Well, Guatemala, unfortunately, uh, it's still, we're still lagging way behind, uh, particularly on the fisheries and those areas. One of the main issues that we have is contamination within our river systems which of course all empty into the ocean. Sure. And then of course there's a problem within the fishery and the uncontrolled uh, fishing. You know, um, you were with Kiwi and he told you about all the sailfish, the problem with sailfish, right. that they keep bringing it in even though nobody, it's not edible. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's still, we are working on it. We, I, cannot, I cannot say that Guatemala is in the forefront. No, it isn't. In this farm in particular and what we do here, we are in the forefront. We are trying to do things differently. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people with good initiatives but the government itself hasn't quite caught up to the, to the necessities and the impact that we could have, positive impact that we could have by good conservancy practices. Ricardo, this is a fantastic place, but in the end, proof is in the pudding, or I should say, in the cup. This is just a tiny cup, oops. So Cheers. Mm, that's good coffee. I'm here with Captain Kiwi. We're on the Allure in Guatemala, and I just had some questions for you. I mean, this is an incredible fishery. All the fish we've been catching today were pretty big fish. It's, yeah, that's right. That's about average size, what we saw today. It seems to be a pretty 
well-managed fishery. It's pretty you know, robust. I mean, what do you attribute the health of this fishery to? In 2001, I think the first law was passed here to protect the sailfish. Like it's been illegal to kill sailfish since or build fish since 2001. Okay. Uh, Tim Choke was flying air behind all that. Oh, That's awesome. obviously helped. There's no major ports here either for like large fishing vessels to sort of come in and out. There's the local, local like uh, commercial fleet, but they don't impact on the fishery all that much. The more there are, the more they do. But however, it's sort of maintained. Uh, yeah, I've been here like like 14 years now, 13, 14 years. Yeah, and it seems to have maintained uh, maintained the numbers. You know yeah. what I mean? And we're all conservation minded. I mean. It's all released fish in circle hooks only. Right. No, no it was amazing the, the fish we did catch on bait. Circle hooks. Yeah, on bait it's all circle hooks. Yeah. yeah. So we're not using circle hooks on the fly. No, 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 no. But I mean that's not a bait. So I mean when you right. when you get a bite, you're setting the hook, you're catching in the mouth anyway. Right. But bait when you feel when you got a J hook on a bait and they can swallow it, right. That's when you do damage to a fish, you know what right. I mean? When it rakes the gill plate or you hook them deep in the stomach. Right. So these circle hooks will I'm talking ninety-five percent of the time. We'll hook right on the top corner of that jaw, you know, the top corner of the mouth. Yeah, let me just ask you the political thing again. I mean, isn't, isn't that a concern, though, that the you know, change of government could change the whole situation? Oh, it's, no, there's without a doubt. This last government has been proactive within Globe, which is the tourist board. They've been proactive in trying to protect what they have here, and they realize what the resource is worth to the country financially. Yeah. And, uh, and I think they've been trying sort of promote it and they've passed another law just last year uh, to try and curb the commercial fishing whereas the government before that the first lady pretty much said it's open slather go help yourselves no one's going to get prosecuted if you're killing billfish because there's hungry people around well there's other ways to address that if you take the example of what's happened to swordfish you know on the on the east coast of america of the u.s yeah. You know, the average size of swordfish, of course, the caught them shrinking and shrinking to the point where they're yeah. catching them smaller than their natural sexually mature size. Yeah. So they're that's, not able to reproduce. Yeah, that's the end of it. You know, so that can happen anywhere. It takes political will, yeah. you know, and people really caring about these things to ensure that that doesn't happen. All right, Captain Kiwi. All right. Hey, Cheers. appreciate it. On the rigger. The rigger bait. Just as luck would have it. Boom, a sailfish comes up in the spread just as we ended. It was a mad dash as everyone got into position to do their job. Jumps! Woo! Little greyhound action. Come on, fish. Yeah! God, I almost f***ed that up so bad. Yeah, it uncast till I tell you to I cast. Know, dude, I know, dude. But all good. It worked out good. I saw him coming in fast. I just panicked. All right, fish on. Hot little sail, hot little Guatemalan sail. Just tore it up. Ladies and gentlemen, what it's all about, fish on. We only have a 20 pound tippet on here, so we can't work on this fish. Just gotta wait our time out. Pump and reel when it's time. Here he comes, coming up.
Got it. Sonrez, come on, Sonrez. Doing it. <laughs> fish on the fly. Pass off the grid. Woo -hoo -hoo. Digging that. Nice fish, nice, nice sailfish. Beautiful shape, we can release this fish. Okay. Good shape, let us swim off and fight another day. What a beautiful Pacific sailfish. I don't think anybody can appreciate how beautiful of an animal this is until they come up and see one of them up close and realize what a huge, huge resource this is. And it doesn't belong to any person, it belongs to all of us. So when we come out and fish these waters, it's mandatory that we release these fish, and I'm glad that we do that. This sail's about ready to go. We got him off the grid, on Haas off the grid. See ya, buddy. Woo! While in Guatemala, we stayed and fished out of Sailfish Oasis Resort with Captain Chris Van Leeuwen, AKA Captain Kiwi, on the Allure 2. Special thanks to Chris, Liz, and Nick. John Haas, Haas Off The Grid, HaasOffTheGrid.com. Go check it out because it's got it going on. It's a little theme song for the show. <laughs>